are governed by two laws. One is Herring's law, the other one is Sherrington's law. Herring's law refers to simultaneous and equal innervation to the yolk muscles. During levoversion, the right medial rectus and the left lateral rectus, as I had shown in the previous slide, when I am looking towards the left, the right medial rectus and the left lateral rectus, they receive equal and simultaneously flow of innervation. And during convergence, right and left medial rectus muscles, they receive equal and simultaneous flow of innervations. As per the Sherrington's law, it is the law of reciprocal innervation for agonist and antagonist. When the agonist contracts, the antagonist takes a chill pill and relaxes. So, then we have another very important concept which is involved in avoidance of squint and that is binocular vision. It prefers to using both the eyes for looking at the same target and perceiving it as one. It develops during the first six months of life. The prerequisite for having good binocular single vision are good distance visual equity and nearly equal vision or equal visual equity in both the eyes, straight eyes that is there is no misalignment and normal visual cortex. There are three gates, simultaneous macular perception, fusion which involves convergence and divergence range and stereopsis which refers to the depth perception. So here in the image that we see on the side of this slide, we have the image of a flower. If the visual equity in both right and left eye is crisp, the visual cortex will fuse this image and see it as one flower which is sharply focused. The brain ignores the image of the right eye if there is no binocularity. If the image is fuzzy, then the brain will ignore that element and just focus on the image of the light eye, left eye. But there will be no depth perception because there is no stereopsis that is happening if one eye is visually compromised. This binocular vision can be assessed using a tool which is called as synaptophore or there are certain tests such as the Titmus fly test which can be used to evaluate the amount of stereopsis or the amount of binocular vision a child or an individual has. There are two more concepts, motor fusion and sensory fusion. Motor fusion refers to the ability to physically move the eyes in response to disparate that is different retinal stimuli and sensory fusion refers to using the image from each corresponding retinal area and superimposing them at the level of the occipital cortex or the visual cortex. Sensory adaptation to strabismus happens either the child or the individual will have suppression or they will have amblyopia or abnormal retinal correspondence. So let's look at each of these terms individually. When we say the word suppression, it refers to the fact that either one eye or both the eyes can be suppressed alternatively. It is a binocular phenomenon. It can be central or peripheral. So here we have this horse which this child is viewing and there is squint in the left eye of this child. So from the right eye, he is having a very crisp image of the horse, but there is a confusing image that has been created by the squinting eye. Now the brain will try and refuse the image from the squinting left eye and will just process the image from the right eye. There is a suppression of the left eye image because it is not crisp and the brain is no longer acknowledging it. The suppression can be evaluated by Worth 4 dot test or Begolini glasses. So, the Worth 4 dot test is carried out using diplopia goggles in which there is a red glass which is put in front of the right eye and there is green glass which is put in front of the left eye. As the test suggests, there are four dots that are seen. 
there is a yellow or a white light at the bottom, there is a red light at the top and there are two green lights on the side. So what do we ask the individual who is undertaking this test? How many lights are you seeing? What color are they? Where are they located? Are all the lights in line or are some higher than the others? And do all the lights show up at one time or are they flashing on and off? So if the individual has a normal response, you will see two red lights, one on top of the other, as in one superiorly and one inferiorly, and two green lights on the side. If there is normal retinal correspondence with squint, you, the individual will see two red lights uh, and three green lights. If there is suppression of the left eye, so remember left eye had a green lens in front of it. So if there is suppression of the left eye, this green will not be acknowledged and you will see only the red which was there in front of the right eye. And if there is suppression in the right eye, remember right eye had red glass in front of it, no red color would be seen, you will see three green lights.